This is Adi Sharma Solution Class 12th Chapter 9 Continuity Exercise is 9.2 Find all the points of discontinuity of f defined by fx equals modulus of x minus modulus of x plus 1 Now this modulus this modulus is a different function x is a different function x is a polynomial function of one degree so this is a combination of two function you can say this is the operation of two function so x is another function mod x is another function similarly x plus one is a polynomial when it is inside a modulus modulus function is another function right so hx you can call it as mod x as hx and uh, mod x plus one is gx so basically you are doing hx minus gx two functions subtracted so we have to find all the discontinuity points if at all it they exist in this expression or in this fx or function which is a combination of multiple function as i just indicated right so the best way is to take this x when this x is zero x is 0 when it is 0 because the points of discontinuity have to be found out. When is x plus 1 equals 0? It is going to be 0 when x is equal to minus 1. So these are the two points where we have to check the discontinuity 0 and negative 1. So the first step is first make a number line. This will you know make uh, the things easier for you. So what are the different points as I, as I just suggested? It's negative 1 and 0. So minus 1 and 0. So first we'll do is what? We will take uh, the different domains. So fx is mod x minus mod x plus 1. First we will take this domain that is minus infinity to negative 1. Or you can say that x is less than minus 1. So when x is less than negative 1, of course, mod x is going to be negative. What is mod x? Mod x is simply x when is x is greater than 0 and negative x when x is less than 0. Right? Basically, it is x greater than or equal to 0, then it is x. So, when we are talking about negative 1 and below that, of course, mod x will be negative x. And this mod x plus 1 will also be because you are going on the left of negative 1. For example, uh, just put x as minus 2. What is uh, minus 2 plus 1? It is negative 1. And what is the modulus of negative 1? Because it is negative value. As I said, the x value is negative, which is x is less than minus 1 in this case. So, you will get a negative of this modulus function. That is, the things will come out as negative. So, you have to write minus x minus x plus 1. So minus is already outside, but I'm talking about when you replay, when you remove this modulus sign, it will be negative of x plus 1. So just open this, it will be 1, minus x, x cancelled. Now the second domain is this negative 1 to 0. So we'll include this negative 1, right? So x is greater than minus 1 and it is less than 0. So we are talking about this domain. X is less than minus 1. We are already taken. But when we are taking minus 1 and 0, we have to include minus 1 because we have not included minus 1 when X is less than minus 1. So what is, uh, what is in between minus 1 and 0? Of course, X is less than 0. So it will be negative. But this X plus 1 will not be 0 because x plus 1 will be 0 only below minus 1, not below 0. From minus 1 to 0, it will be positive x plus 1. So, modulus when you open, x will be negative x, but x plus 1 will be positive x plus 1. So, minus x minus x minus x minus 1, you can just write it as minus 2x minus 1. So, we have taken two domains now, two boundary values or inside what the function is behaving. Now, the third one is greater than 0. So x is greater than or equal to 0, you have to include 0 because we haven't included 0 in the previous one. So x plus 1 of course, when it is positive in minus 1 to 0, it will be positive in x plus 1. 
and x is always positive when you go beyond zero or right hand side of the zero so what do you get negative one so what do you get we are going to use this please remember i am going to use it so you just keep this in mind so we can write the whole of the function like this that if x is less than minus one what do you get you get a one when you have x between negative one and zero that is x is between inclusive of minus one and non-inclusive of zero you're going to get minus two x minus one when x is greater than zero you will get x greater than or equal to zero you will get minus one okay this is done now this is step one over step two is we have to check for zero and minus one because the question is asking all about the points of discontinuity here so we'll do minus one we'll do zero okay so second step you can check zero first or you can check minus one first so it's up to you so x equals zero x equals to minus one where the the equation is going to get some discontinuity so let us check at x equals minus one so x is minus one so what you can do is you can i'll do i'll tell you two methods first step two method is by minus one minus edge and minus one plus edge which is left hand limit and right hand limit we have already already been doing but you can use this uh, fx function of the step one we have already found right but we are not using i'll just tell you that in the step three so step two is i'm using the you know trivial method minus one minus h minus one plus h i'm replacing mod x mod x plus one the x with minus one minus h in this case so it will be you can take minus common minus one plus h here you can cancel these two minus h so minus of something is going to be positive and it comes out of the modulus minus of something it comes out it will be positive so h gets cancelled you will get a one but you see this uh, in step one we have already found that it is already one fx is one for the first case now we are doing the trivial method for the step two right hand limit uh, minus one plus h just replace x by minus one plus h and whatever you get you can just cancel these so i am applying this limit h tends to zero this is going to be zero so the, this term is cancelled minus one plus h you can just write it as minus one you can take minus common and you can get get one and one minus h so modulus of minus will be positive when you come outside so one minus h it will be apply this h equals zero you will get a one so this is one this is one and you can always do using the uh, function of step one function that is minus two x minus one that i'll do in this step uh, three so what is the value of a uh, function at minus one just put x as minus one what do you get this this value I'm just apply, uh, replacing x by minus one. The value of the function at minus one. So one time you get one, one time you you get one, third time you also get one. Left hand limit, right hand limit, and also the function value at minus one. All the values are ones, so th these are this f is continuous at x equals minus one. Now the step three is check it at zero. So I'm not going to use the trivial method, left hand limit, right hand limit. You can always use that. But we are going to use the step one function which we have devised. So I am just saying zero minus h, zero plus h. You can always always do that. This this is one method which I just uh, I just showed you in the step two. But I am not going to use it. I am just trying to give you all the flavors how you can do this question. So I am just using this function which this one. So when you have x equals zero, what is zero minus this uh, equality? For that you will use minus two x minus one. right so just apply this x tends to 0 in this function minus 2x minus 1 so minus 2 into 0 minus 1 it will be so this is negative 1 okay now right hand limit is what x is greater than equal to 0 x is greater than 0 plus x is greater than 0 so direct value we have for x greater than 0 that this is going to be a negative one already it is it is uh, already being found you know This this is this is why we have done the step one to get the final values. So right hand limit is minus one, left hand limit is uh, minus one using the function minus two x minus one, and let us find out the value of the function at zero. What is the value of the function at zero? Uh, so zero we have to check and just replace it by zero at zero. Okay, that is going to be 
I am just saying just replace this uh, x by 0. So it will be mod 0 minus mod 0 plus 1. So this is uh, 0 and minus 1. So in these all the three cases, what do you get? Minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. So f is continuous here also, x equal to 0. That is how we check the points of discontinuity. Determine if fx equals x square sine 1 by x when x is not equal to 0 and 0 when x is equal to 0 is a continuous function. So, when x is not equal to 0, you are going to employ x square sine 1 by x. When x is 0, you are going to apply 0. So, we have to determine if this function is continuous or not. Okay. So there are various methods you can apply which we have discussed earlier in this uh, exercise or discussion also. So, so x square sine 1 by x is simply x square is another function, uh, sine 1 by x is another function, x square is a polynomial function, sine 1 by x is of course a sine function or a trigonometric function. So they are individually uh, because they are individually continuous. So multiplication of them of these two will also give you the continuity. So what we do here is we will because this is continuous on the real number line or real numbers. So we can choose any c or any k. So f c will be what? c square sine 1 by c. If you replace uh, the x value with c, you, you have to get c square sine 1 by c. So we, there are certain steps you can take because there are two, two steps you have to take because one is x not equal to 0, one is x equal to 0. So you have to check for both of these functions. So the first function is uh, when we have x equal to c, that is limit x tends to c, we'll apply the limit uh, in both the functions. So limit x tends to c for x square and limit x tends to c for sine 1 by x. So what is the limit x tends to c for x square? It is of course c square because there is no unprecedented values or undescribable values. So we have c square here also sine 1 by c. So what do you get? When you apply the limit extends to c, you get c square sine 1 by c. So when you apply the value of c in the function, you get c square sine 1 by c. That means the function is continuous at all points where x is not equal to 0. Because we have chosen some c which is not equal to 0. So limit x tends to c for fx is equal to fc. This is continuity for all points where x is not equal to 0. So now you have to check for x equals 0. Why? See, the sum sine 1 by x, x is, uh, if you put 0, it will be 1 by 0, which is uh, infinite. And that we cannot comprehend. We should not do. Now the second step is for x equals 0. That is, we are going to check for x equals 0 because there are two parts of this function. So we have to check the continuity at both of these parts. So c is 0, what is f0? When you apply when you apply this f0 you are going to get a 0 f0 is 0 okay so we will do the left hand limit and right hand limit and try to find out the left hand limit right hand limit along the value of the function here but the criteria uh, you can do it you know of all, always you can apply but since x at x equal to 0 it is already 0 if you take 0 minus h and 0 plus h left hand limit right hand limit so that will not be a good idea. Let us see sine theta. Sine theta is between minus 1 and 1. What is theta here? Sine 1 by x. So let us multiply both sides by x squared. So you get minus x squared less than or equal to x squared sine 1 by x less than or equal to again multiply by x squared. So apply the limits now. I am applying the limit. Limit x tends to. We are applying the limit x tends to 0. So when you apply a limit x tends to 0, you get this minus x squared. Of course, 0 it will be. And limit x tends to 0, x square sine 1 by x. Here also apply the limit x tends to 0, x square. So the left hand side and right hand side, this is going to be 0, x is 0. This is also 0. So the middle one is between 0 and 0. That is, it is it has to be equal to 0. Okay. There are two boundary values which, which are 0, 0. That means the x square sine 1, one, uh, sine one by x has to be 0. So when you apply limit extends to 0 for x square sine 1 by x, 
it is going to be zero limit x tends to zero for x square sin 1 by x it is going to be zero that is this you have uh, you know got by uh, putting 0 minus h and 0 plus h left hand limit right hand limit that is also a valid way to of doing it but this is a, a better way and a shortest way to do it basically limit x tends to 0 minus fx is equal to limit is x tends to 0 plus fx which is the value of the function at 0 which is already given in the question which is 0 when x is equal to 0 left hand limit right hand limit is equal to the value of the function at, at 0 so these this observation uh, we can conclude that f is continuous at every point of the real line so f is a continuous function both ways we have checked all the values that is not equal to 0 and is equal to 0 so this function which is a part of two two uh, different and in, uh, individual functions these are continuous by themselves okay Now this question, uh, find all points of discontinuity of the function. So this ft is already given and t is also given. What you are going to replace in t, t of course 1 by x minus 1. So this is the function ft is 1 by t square plus t minus 2. So this ft is 1 by t square plus t minus 2. Let us find out the factors. So I am making the factor t square plus 2t minus t minus 2 you can write you can take t common t plus 2 minus 1 here and t plus 2 so you get t minus 1 and t plus 2. So you have t minus 1 and t plus 2. So these these are the factors. Now in order to check the discontinuity first we have to check that 1 by 0 form should not come. When it will be 0, the, the denominator, when t minus 1 equal to 0 or t plus 2 equal to 0 or both are 0. So t plus 2 equals 0, that is t is equal to minus 2 and t minus 1 equal to 0, that is t equals to 1. So these are the points where we have to check. But we cannot check just now. Why? Because t is already given as 1 by x minus 1. So we have to check for x, not for t. Remember? So we have this t minus 1 equals 0 where t is equal to 1 and t plus 2 equals 0, t equals minus 2. So t equals 1 will replace because t is actually equal to 1 by x minus 1. So 1 by x minus 1 is equal to 1. So you get x minus 1 equal to 1 which is going to be x equals 2. How about t equals minus 2? Minus 2 has to be equated with 1 by x minus 1. So what do you get? Cross multiply minus 2 into minus 2x and plus 2 equals 1 and this is going to give you to just take 2 on that side so minus 2x equals negative 1 negative negative cancel x is equal to 1 by 2 so x equals 2 and x equals half these are the points of discontinuity which one 2 and half this is also a way which i am showing you and the way i did you can also do like that Okay, this is all about this discussion. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself.